Hello, now we're going to look at rectangular solids. So things that look like shoe boxes or some stuff that looks like rectangular boxes that we carry stuff in or pack stuff into. So that's the visual we have in our minds. We have our normal cardboard type boxes would be our rectangular boxes. Now, when we see our rectangular boxes, our rectangular solids, the two things we always want to think of are volume and surface area. The volume is how much space something takes up. And it's a fairly simple one to get. We multiply the length, multiplied by the width, multiplied by the height. The length multiplied by the width, multiplied by the height. We usually pick the length as being the longest side, but we don't have to. That's just a convention we'd often have. So length multiplied by width multiplied by height gives us our volume. And that's how much space something takes up. The other thing we want to think about out for our rectangular boxes, our rectangular solids, is surface area. And the surface area is just the area of all of the surface, surfaces added together. Actually, that is plural. So all of the surfaces added together. So I'd have the area of, say, the front face here would be the height by the width. This is just a rectangle. So the area of that front face of my box would be the height multiplied by the width. And I could do that for all of the different surfaces of my box and add them all up. And that's what we call the surface area or the total surface area is the other way it's often labeled. So the volume and the surface area are two tools that we're often going to need for our rectangular solids, our cardboard boxes. So let's have a look at a practical example. We have this rectangular box and we're asked, what's the volume of the box? So I'm asked for volume. I'm going to write down my formula. So the volume is equal to length multiplied by width multiplied by height. So I have it written out in letters here, and I also have it written out in English. And I know I use brackets for my multiply anytime I'm subbing something in. So all I have to do is multiply my length by my width by my height. So I have my length would be 10. My width would be five and my height would be three. So if I multiply those things together, I get 150. And I can look to my units and say, well, I've multiplied meters by meters by meters. So I have meters cubed. I have three lengths multiplied together. So I have meters cubed. Now, if we look to the surface area, of this box. We want the area of all of the surfaces that make up the box. So we can see three sides of this box, but we know there's a hidden back to the box and there's a hidden side back here and there's the base of the box that we can't see. So we have the three sides that we can see, the front, the side and the top, and we can't see the bottom, the other side or the back. So we need to get all of those areas, all of the surfaces added up. That's all the surface area is. So S for surface area, just like capital V was for volume. What's the area of this surface going to be, the front of my box? Well, that's going to be 3 multiplied by 5. This is just a rectangle. So the length multiplied by the width is how I get my area of my rectangle. So that's going to be 3 multiplied by 5. And I know there's also going to be another 3 multiplied by 5 at the back, so I could get the back done as well. 3 multiplied by 5 for the back as well. So this is the front, and this would be the back. And we're adding up all of these different surfaces, and we're also going to have the sides of the box. So I can see the length of this rectangle, but I also know that it has this side here must be 3. This length and this length must be the same. They're just the height of the box. These lines are all the same length, because we're dealing with a rectangular box. So that means that the area of the side here is going to be length by width is 10 by 3. Plus another 10 by 3 for the side we can't see. For the side back here that is covered over by the top that we can't see because it's behind the top. So we have the front, the back, and the two sides all added up. And then what remains to us is we have to add up the top and the bottom 
of the box, the area of the top of the box that we can see here, and the area of the bottom of the box, or the base of the box. So what's the dimensions of our top of our box here? Well, we know this length must be the same as this length. We know this length must be the same as this length. So the area of the top of our box is going to be 5 by 10. And then the base would be the same. So this would be the top of the box. And then the base of the box, which I'll call BA for base. So uh, that is going to be 5 by 10 as well. Now I have all of these little bits of multiply to do. So I have 15 plus 15 plus 30 plus 30 plus 50 plus 50. And that's the front, the back, the two sides, the top and the base or the bottom. And that's where all of those areas are coming from. I'm just getting the area of each surface, each rectangle individually, and I'm adding them all up and that's my total surface area, or my surface area, as it's often called. And that adds up to 190. And this one, I was multiplying meters by meters. Each time I was just multiplying a meter by a meter. So all of them are in meters squared. So that's how we handle our rectangular boxes. Now, if we think about a cube, there's something a little bit unusual about it. It is a rectangular box, but it's a special kind because it has something unusual about it, all of the side lengths are the same. So this length is the same as this length is the same as this length. The length, the width and the height are all the same. So we can use the same letter to describe them. So the volume of my cu cube is going to follow exactly the same logic, but it's going to look a little bit different in its formula because the volume, which we're told about in the question, is going to be length multiplied by length multiplied by length. And I have three things multiplied together. I have three L's multiplied together. So I would call that L cubed. Now, let's think about our question. We're told the volume of a cube is eight centimeters cubed. What is the surface area? So I've thought about the fact that I was uh, told I had a volume of eight centimeters cubed. That means that at L cubed, the side length or the volume is going to be 8. So that's one piece of information I'm given in the question. And I'm also asked about the surface area of the cube. So the surface area is going to be all of my lengths. Sorry, it's going to be all of the areas, I should say, of my cube all added up together. So the, the surface area would be my front face of my cube would be L multiplied by L. And then and, uh, the side face would, would also be L multiplied by L. And I can keep doing this for all of them all the way along. The back is going to be L by L. I'm going to write this and come back to you. So we go through the same process as we did with the surface area of the rectangular box, but we can see that in this case, all of the surf all of the areas are exactly the same. They're all just L squared. So we just end up with one, two, three, four, five, six L squared. We just have six of the same area added up together. L multiplied by L is L squared. So we just have six of the same area multiplied together. Now if I want the surface area, I can see that I need to know the length, because that's how I've defined my surface area. I need to know the length of the side of the a cube. Well, can I figure it out based on what I was told? Well, I figured out that the volume was the length cubed, and I was told that that was 8. So the length cubed is equal to 8. So what number would I multiply by itself three times in order to end up with 8? Well, that means that at L must be equal to, let's write this over here, L must be equal to 2 because 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, multiplied by 2 is 8. So L must be equal to 2. And then the surface area would just be equal to 6 
times 2 squared, which is going to be 6 by 4 is 24. Now we could also do this out the long way. We could have found L2, and then we could have found our surface area was. I'm going to write it out the long way. So we could have also found the surface area by adding up the surface by adding up the areas of each one of the surfaces the front the side the back the side the top and the base and when we added all of those up 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 would also equal 24 and our units should be centimeters squared because we're dealing with an area now finally a rectangular box has a width and a length of 3 meters and a volume of 54 meters squared. Find its height. So let's write down what we know. We know the volume would be equal to the length multiplied by the width multiplied by the height is equal to 54. And we know the length and the width. The length is equal to the width is equal to 3. I'm going to draw the picture for this. So in a question where I'm told I have a rectangular box, I'm going to draw a rectangular box. And this is a really important skill to develop, just like writing down the formula for the volume is a really important skill to develop and writing down L plus W or L is equal to W is equal to three. So with my picture, I can now fill in what I know. I know that the length and the width are both three and I'm asked about the height. So let's call that H. So I know that at 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by h is equal to 54. So 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by h is equal to 54. I got that from my picture, and I got that from writing down the formula for what I was told about the volume being 54, and I know what the volume is for a rectangular box. So 3 by 3 is 9 by h is equal to 54, and I want to know what the height is. So what I need to do is divide both sides by 9. This is just solving an equation. And I get 6. The height must be 6, and the units I'm dealing with is meters. So that's how I approach a question like this, and this is really where we're heading in the long run. I get a block of information, and I have to be able to tell myself the story of it. So I'm told I have a rectangular box. I draw a rectangular box. I fill in all the information into the picture, into the it diagram uh, that I have from the question, and I write down any formula that I know that might help me with solving the problem. So I'm told about the volume, I draw uh, out the volume formula and any information I'm given, and with my picture and my formula, I'll be able to figure out the answer I need. And that's what we need for now.